So we have to prove the Hambanach theorem in geometric form. We have seen the Hambanach theorem for functions, and now we say we see the Hambanach theorem for level sets, hmm? geometric form. Um, we will split the proof into two sub-theorems. So maybe theorem one. Okay, so uh, let E be a normed vector space and let C be a subset convex open open and non empty then we take a point outside that we denote it by x not maybe yes let x not be a point outside so now we, we uh, separate x not and c so there exists exists, let me denote it by uh, L, a linear continuous functional on E, so that uh, the, the picture is the following, essentially we have a convex set, then a point outside, this is open, this is x naught, so there is a closed hyperplane separating so that uh, C lies on one side of the hyperplane and X naught on the other side and this is closed so L is in a star uh, and so that uh, say L of X is less than L of X naught for any point x in C. So uh, C is from one side, x naught is on the other side, and therefore in particular, in particular, uh, the set uh, where L is equal to L, in particular, um, L equal L of X naught separates, separates C and X naught. So, um, the proof. So, possibly by translation, possibly translating, we can assume, we can suppose. That zero is in C. Remember that C is open, so it coincides with its interior, and therefore zero is an interior point. Zero is here. Now we want to apply the Han Banach in the in the form of functions. So we have to find the function G, a subspace capital G and uh, um, a sublinear function P. So capital G, so let uh, capital G be equal to the span of X naught. So this is capital G. Then we have G, we define G linear function as follows so g of lambda x naught is equal 
by definition lambda. Okay, so notice that it is important to remark, this is obvious, but let me write it g of x naught is equal to 1. Okay, obviously. And g is continuous and linear. This is always with the induced, with the induced norm. Okay, uh, why I stress this fact? Because then I, I, I want to show, so I want to find the function so that C becomes the one sublevel set. So C will be the set of points where some function P is less than one, while this is of course outside and is exactly equal than one. Okay, so the function P, uh, maybe I already wrote, yes, I say, so this is G. Now we need P. In order to apply Lambanac, to apply Hambanac, remember Hambanac was the theorem, the proof of which was divided into two. There was one part in which you extend the the G out at one point outside, and then the other part, which was abstract and based on Zorn's lemma. So this, this I want to define it, and, and uh, for any x, uh, for any x in E, we set P of x alpha. Okay, what does it mean? It means the following. So I have a point x, any point x, outside or in, inside doesn't matter. So I, I start by homothetizing C, since away, at some moment there will be alpha large enough so that this is alpha C now, this is C. Alpha is very large, and this is alpha times c. Huh? And therefore, now this point x that I have fixed before lies inside some alpha c. Okay? Then I take the smallest alpha. Okay? So now I, I, I reduce alpha in order to take the smallest one. And the, and, and the definition of p at this point is this smallest alpha, uh, roughly. Okay, this is it, it is an infimum. Okay, so this is the definition of p. Now we have to prove various various fact about the connection between p and c. So let me state it uh, more precisely. So in an, in the order. Lemma, lemma one, say, P satisfies the properties of, uh, of Ambanak, in particular, so P, so P of lambda x is equal lambda P of x for any lambda non negative and x in the null space, so this is uh, point one. Point two is P of x plus y is less than, uh, maybe, maybe so, sorry, maybe there is first, uh, well, okay, doesn't matter. I, I will say it during the proof. So we have this, and then we have, uh, uh, there exists a constant, let me denote it by, M such that okay, and then see.
So this is the standard way to pass from a convex set to a function which is positively one homogeneous and sublinear so that uh, the, 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 the original convex set is the unit ball of P. Okay? This is the crucial uh, remark. So we have to show this uh, lemma, in, and so let me erase something here. Uh, Uh, the function? Yes, the function P is defined on the wall of E and it is finite, and we will see this now in a moment. Uh, which is the question? Maybe? Is it the guarantee that there is alpha? Yes, indeed. This was what I was thinking just before writing this. You are right, this could be empty in principle. The, but the question is maybe there is no alpha such that given x, there is no alpha such that x is an alpha c. Actually, uh, this is not the case. Actually, this is finite, and we will see during the proof. So this set, you are right, correct uh, comment, this set is non-empty, given x. Okay, this was the question. Now we will see during the proof. And this is a, a, a consequence of the fact that c is open because we will see it because C is open. Uh, because, of course, if, there is, if there, there is no alpha, then P is plus infinity. And that, that makes problem uh, in the application of Ambanak. So now let, let's see uh, why all these kind of things. So. Okay, um, point one. Okay, so uh, remember the definition. L let me write it uh, as follows, maybe. Huh? So P of lambda x, take lambda, take lambda positive, then P of lambda x by definition is the infimum of, of alpha positive such that alpha to the minus 1 lambda x belongs to C. Now let me multiply and divide by alpha here. OK. The infimum is over all alpha such that this holds, OK? Now, uh, lambda is positive. We change name. Uh, lambda is positive and given. So let me write this. So this is equal to lambda inf over mu, such that mu minus 1 x is in C, which is exactly P of, P of x. Hmm. So for any lambda positive, we have um, positive one homogeneity. And it is clear that if lambda, it is equal, if lambda is 0 also. So, so the same holds when lambda is equal to 0. And therefore, formula 1 is true for any lambda larger or equal than 0, larger than or equal than 0. Is it OK? Okay. Now, maybe the comment, uh, the, uh, the first initial comment would be actually his comment. So one should, first thing to prove should be that this is not empty. So let us make the following remark, side remark, say, C is absorbing 
what does it mean? It means that, namely, g given any, given any x in e, there exists a constant. Let me call it, uh, I don't know, a constant r, such that x belongs to r times c. Uh, let us see why. This is a consequence of the fact that so take x any x huh? so x belongs to uh, some uh, oh. Since uh, uh, C is open, there is a ball. There is a ball. Uh, there is a radius, positive radius, small r, such that the open ball uh, is contained in C. Okay, so. Uh, first remark, take small r. Since, since c is open and 0 is an interior point, we can pick uh, uh, there exists r positive such that br0 is contained in c. Okay, And then we take this small r. Then we take a point x in e. And uh, we have that, of course, B. Uh, now, this is not true huh? because the, the ball is open. So it is not true. So, I mean, if I have point X and uh, take the distance, it is not true that it belongs to the ball of this radius, but just just a little bit. This, is, this becomes true, OK, for any small epsilon. Hmm? OK, other questions? If there are questions, please stop me so that, is it OK? OK, now uh, I want to put here r instead. So what happens if I put here r? Then I think it happens something like this. Uh, um, 1 over r x plus epsilon. Uh, this is equal uh, to this. OK, so we have. Hmm? Is it OK? But Br is contained in C, so this is contained in 1 over R, x plus epsilon times C. Huh? And this shows that, hence, there is an alpha such that, uh, hence, a set of all alpha positive such that x belongs to alpha c is not empty. Hmm? Because one of those alpha is, is exactly this. OK? Huh? So maybe this should be maybe the starting point of the proof. Starting point of the proof should be this. This set is non empty. So that this is real valued. Of course, it is non negative, but real valued. Huh? Then, once we know this, we can prove point one. Hmm?
Okay, so now point one is proven. Uh, let us show point two. Okay. So take now two points, x and y in E. Now we know that uh, C is absorbing. So there are two numbers, say lambda 1 and lambda 2, such that this holds. So, so let me denote it. Yes, so there, there exists lambda 1 and lambda 2, such that x1 belongs to, uh, sorry, x belongs to uh, lambda 1 c and y belongs to lambda 2 c. Okay? This means that uh, there is some small c1 such that x, x is equal to lambda 1 c1. So, hence there exists some small c1 in c and c2 in c such that x is equal to lambda 1 c1 and y is equal to lambda 2 c2. Hmm? Okay, this is... So. Now, x plus y, therefore, is equal to lambda 1 c1 plus lambda 2 c2. And we want to use convexity of c. So in order to make a convex combination, it is natural here to divide by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Okay, so we multiply and divide. C1. Um, C2. Hmm? Okay, now uh, these are non negative numbers, actually positive numbers that sum up to 1. The sum of this plus this is equal to 1. Therefore, this is a convex combination of two points, C1 and C2, of the set C. Therefore, this is an element of C. Okay? So this shows, therefore, that so this is this belongs to lambda one plus lambda two of capital C by convexity. Okay. And now you remember the definition of P. But P is the smallest number such that this inclusion holds, and therefore P is necessarily less than or equal than this number because you remember the definition. is the smallest number alpha such that x is in alpha c. Uh, so by definition, this implies that this is less than or equal than lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Hmm? This holds of taking the infimum with respect to a lambda 1 and lambda 2 gives uh, gives conclusion two. Okay. So in uh, we, we have used convexity here. Uh, in in point one we have used not only convexity but also absorbing property absorbing which is consequence of the fact that this set is supposed to be open. So convexity and uh, open openness uh, give us two relevant points so that we are already in the setting of Han Banach. Uh, now we want this. Point three essentially is again a consequence of the fact that C is open. 
because we have already essentially, so first of all, P is non-negative by definition. So this inequality is immediate. Now, let us show, let us, uh, sh show the second inequality, which we have already shown, because we know that it is absorbing, so we know that X belongs to, uh, I think, something like 1 over R, uh, X plus epsilon uh, C, okay? Huh? This was the previous, I think it was this, no? Please check, it was this. Okay, so this, this again, remember definition of P, P is the smallest numbers that, that this inclusion holds. Therefore, P is surely less than or equal than this factor in front. Okay? So, by definition, this implies that P is less than or equal than 1 over R X plus Epsilon. But this is true for any positive epsilon. Therefore, sending epsilon to 0 plus, this implies sending epsilon to 0, this implies p of x less than or equal than 1 over r x. So, and, and 1 over r is the constant that I have indicated here by m, capital M. Hmm? Well, we cannot hope to have a sort of inequality like small m here, norm of x. This cannot be. We cannot hope. But at least we can hope this. We cannot hope this. For instance, Take uh, in R2 the following convex set. Now I make a finite dimensional uh, observation, two dimensions. So uh, take, for instance, the following convex set in R2 origin 1 minus 1. Okay, this is C. Okay, this is C, this is open, convex, non-empty. And actually, it is uh, the unit ball of, uh, of a f function P. So which function P? Huh? So P of x, y equal to what? absolute value of y. So absolute value of y, which in cannot be, uh, which cannot be larger than or equal than some constant square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. Huh? for some positive m. So we cannot hope to have uh, uh, this. And this is in finite dimension due to the fact that this open convex set can be unbounded. Huh? Because in finite dimension, if this would be bounded, convex and open, then whatever. I mean, finite dimension, if this, we are in this situation, then we can find small m because we can put a small ball inside which gives us this inequality. But then a larger ball, a big ball outside of the norm which, gives, uh, which would give us the, the convex inequality. Okay, is this clear? So we cannot, we cannot hope to, to improve this, in this generality, this, this inequality. But openness gives us at least this. Hmm? Uh, 
uh, okay, it remains to show property four. Okay, so take x in C. C is open. It means that there exists small epsilon positive such that 1 plus epsilon x belongs to C. This means that equivalently that x belongs to 1 plus epsilon to the minus 1 c. And this, remember in the definition of p of x, this implies that p of x is surely less than this prefactor here, because it's the smallest one. So this is less uh, than 1 plus epsilon. for any epsilon, okay, and this is less than 1. So we have shown that, uh, we have shown this, in, this inclusion, okay, so take any point in C, then necessarily P of X is less than 1. So this means this inclusion, okay. Now we have to show the converse, the opposite inclusion. So this one. OK, so take a point. Take a point x such that p of x is less than 1. So there exists alpha. alpha less than 1, such that x, x belongs to alpha c, okay. okay, by definition, and alpha is less than 1. Huh? Now I take simply a combination of the origin and this point here. So I just write x equal to uh, factor, this factor here, uh, so alpha x uh, multiplied by um, alpha minus 1 plus 1 minus uh, alpha minus alpha, alpha, the origin, okay. Okay, so this is I like to say alpha minus one x. So I have a point in C huh? uh, plus one minus alpha, maybe. Okay, so I have this point in C, alpha minus. 1x is in C. Then I have the origin which is in C. Then I take a convex combination of the two points because alpha is in between 0 and 1. Okay, so alpha times this point plus 1 minus alpha times this other point is a convex combination of two points of C. Therefore, C is convex and this belongs to C. And so it is shown that given any point here is a point of C. So lemma one is uh, proven, and now we can erase it, and we can finally use it to prove the, the theorem.
So, uh, therefore, we, we, we have, remember, we have the function g from g to r such that g, g is linear, g is uh, continuous, and g of x0 is equal to 1. Okay, we have also an, a, a, this uh, gauge, this Minkowski functional. Uh, and what about p of x0? Well, p of x0, so uh, g of x0 is 1 here, but x0 is outside uh, c. But c is the set of all points where p is less than 1. And this is outside. Therefore, p of x0 is larger than or equal to 1. OK? Because x0 does not belong to c, does not belong to c by assumption. And c is equal by the lemma. OK? So at x0, we have um, the inequality, that, at least at x0, we have the inequality that we want in order to apply Ambanak. Hence, we have this. OK? Now, having a linear functional, linear function uh, less than or equal than uh, a sublinear function at this point is sufficient to show that this implies that uh, um, g of x is less than or equal to p of x on g on the domain of g. Hmm? Why is this so? Well, take for instance a lambda positive Huh? And the for a point of capital G, uh, and take the following point of capital G. Huh? Remember, capital G is just a line. Eh? So I have to distinguish lambda positive and lambda negative. So this, but G is linear. OK, so this is lambda G of x naught, which is actually lambda. Le, uh, lambda less than or equal than lambda p of x naught because lambda is positive and I have this inequality. Uh, but this is also homogeneous and lambda is positive. So this is equal to p of lambda x naught. OK, so on the positive half line, say half line, I have that g is less than or equal than p. Now I have to check what happens for lambda negative. Huh? So lambda negative still have this. This is negative. And therefore, since P is non-negative, we trivially have this inequality. Okay. Hmm? What does it mean? It means that we uh, it means that we have shown this inequality. Okay. Now we can apply finally Ambanak. We have you have all assumptions to apply Ambanak theorem, so there exists an extension uh, L. I don't know the, the symbol. In the, in the statement, I, I wrote L. I don't remember. So L from E to R. Uh, L extending G and less than I don't remember the, the, the symbol that I use in the statement. Was it L? 
capital. So this is in Banach. Uh, extending G means that in particular at the same at the point x naught L of x naught is equal to G of x naught. Okay. Is equal to one. So this corollary of Amba this is Ambanak maybe in the version of the norm the space. Remember, we made a theorem which was set theory, no continuity. A corollary on norm space, maybe the question you made last time, uh, which gives us continuity. So we know that this is continuous. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm applying the corollary. I don't remember if it was so if I wrote corollary or theorem, but it was a corollary or a topological version of, of Ambanak. Okay, so we have this. Okay. Therefore, on C, on C, uh, this is true everywhere. At the points of capital C, this is also true, but P is less than one. So, you see, uh, the set C is on one side with respect to L equal 1. Uh, and so this concludes the proof. Is it okay? Is it clear? Okay. So, this is the first part, this is the difficult part, because now we have to separate two convex sets. Uh, so, okay. And the notation, I don't remember, maybe was A and B. Okay, theorem. Normal vector space. And A and B subsets of E. Both non-empty. A and B convex okay not remember last time but assume that A is open hmm? and assume that they are disjoint Okay, so the first one is non-empty, convex, and open. The second one is just empty, convex. Then there exists, uh, let me denote it by L. There exists alpha here, such that L equal to alpha separates A and B. So now the situation is more or less like before. We have, now this is A, then we have B. They are convex, etc. I'm putting some closed hyperplane in between, so that A is just from one side and B on the other side. Okay, so the proof is based on the previous theorem, proof, so proof, it is enough, so let, let us consider the following uh, C, let me denote it by C, I think, yes, this is this, 
So what is this set? So we, are, we can add and subtract vectors. So this is, uh, do not confuse this with the, the difference of sets. Difference of sets is another symbol, mm, this one, usually. Huh? Do not confuse this. So, paying attention to this notation, this is just the union, by definition, of all possible differences, as such that Okay. which is actually also equal to the union of A minus B such that B is A. Okay. Now, what about C? Well, homework, maybe. Uh, I, I leave you to check that C is convex. Hmm? It's, it's not difficult, so remarks, so C is convex. Non-empty. Uh, as an exercise, you could, you could uh, well, no, doesn't matter. So C is convex, uh, non-empty, open. Open why open? Because uh, each, of, each of these, uh, given B, small b, this is open. Uh, a minus B is open, uh, and so this, this is the union of open sets. Okay, so this is open, and also it, 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 uh, the origin is outside, so zero is not in C. Why zero is not in C? Because if zero were in C, this means that zero can be written as uh, small a minus small b. Therefore, that a, small a and is equal to small b, and therefore this contradicts this. Hmm? Is it clear? <coughs> because So we can, we can apply the previous theorem. So now we, we apply the previous theorem with the choice C is C and 0 is X0. So apply theorem 1 with 0 equal X0. X0 equal, equal 0. X0 equal 0. And so we find L. such that, uh, and alpha also, okay, L, such that L of X minus, uh, L of A minus B is less than L of zero, okay, which is zero, for any A in A and B in B. Okay. This, but L is linear, therefore this is like to say this for any A in A and B in B. And therefore it is enough to choose, choose now alpha such that alpha is in between the supremum of this and the infimum of this. We know that the supremum over A of this is less than or equal to the infimum over B of this. So there is at least one alpha in, in between. Hmm? And therefore, uh, L equal to alpha is the hyperplane, the closed hyperplane is 
the closed we are looking for. So this gives us theorem two. Now I leave you to, to look at the book of Brezis, for instance, for the separation theorem in the form uh, we have already written. So I assume now that A and B uh, a convex non-empty closed B convex non-empty and compact and then uh, A and B are strictly separated separated by a closed So look at the book of Brezis, where you can find. We have already wrote and written the statement on last time. Okay, I would like to make now an exercise. The exercise is the following. Maybe I leave you partially as a homework. So look at this in the Berezis book, strict separation. And, and uh, um, so Berezis. So exercise. Consider the set A, the sum over uh, J from 1 to N, lambda J, J, such that lambda J is in R, uh, N for any, for J, 1, N, and lambda n is positive. So take, uh, and n is also varying, such that n is n, lambda j is in R, but the last one is positive, okay? And then B, define B as minus A, okay? Define B as minus A. Ah, this is subset of L2, of L2. And EJ are the usual 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, etc., etc. Okay? Now, uh, try to show that one. A and B are convex, non-empty. And uh, two, they are disjoint. Then three for any for any L in L two star huh? so can A B be separated? by a closed hyperplane.
So you have two disjoint convex sets. And uh, however, it is almost clear that if three if point three is true, then they cannot be separated. Huh? Because if if uh, the, the image is the wall of R, it is impossible to put A from one side with respect to a number and B from the other side. Huh? So it is clear that if 3 is true, they cannot be separated. So the point is try to prove that 3 is true. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We have already seen a lot of consequences of Han Banach, so now we pass to another big theorem, which is the Banach Steinhaus. Okay. This is another big theorem, so we have to, to prove it carefully. So we have now, let me denote it by E, Banach space, and N, Banach space, normed vector space. And then we have a family of, uh, let me denote it by Li, let Li be a family of um, linear continuous functionals from uh, maps from E to N, where capital I is a set of indices of indices not necessarily countable. not necessarily countable. Hmm? So you have a big family of, of indices, and then you have a family indicized by capital I of a linear continuous map from a Banach space into N. Then, And assume that uh, okay, suppose suppose that uh, for any x the soup over i the light of x is finite. For any x. Then the statement seems impossible. <laughs> this is, it seems impossible. Soup over i Banach Stenhouse. So, the, what is the meaning of this result? Starting from a pointwise estimate, so for any x, given x, <coughs> this number is finite but depends on x. The statement says not only this, but then if I then take the supremum over x, this is still finite. So this is a uniform estimate starting from a pointwise estimate. Maybe before doing the proof again, we could see. Ah, I would like to leave you some exercise. Uh, and before doing the proof, again, home. Let 
let n in n and ln from c0 to r. So c0, 0, remember who is c0, 0? c0, 0 is this. Compact supported continuous functions from n to r. This means simply sequences that are zero at some point and then definitely zero. Sequences which are definitely zero. Okay. Uh, C zero zero show that. Uh, um, sup n over n ln of x is finite ah sorry uh, ln of x is equal to n x n n x n find as follows so, so, so show, show this sup ln for any x so we have assumption one so one is satisfied, but, but sup equal super over n equal plus infinity. So this is a failure of banach stenhouse It's an example where banach stenhouse doesn't work. I mean, one is true, but two, but two is false. Is there an explanation for this? So two is false. Evidently, if banach stenhouse is true, there is some assumption missing here, which could be the missing assumption. Yes, C00 is not complete. This is, all, of course, with the infinity norm, eh? as usual. is not complete. Hmm? Remember, C0 is complete with one zero only. This is complete. This is not. Actually, this is the completion of this. The relation between these two is that if you complete C0, 0 in the infinity norm, then you get C0. This is always a difficulty when you have to distinguish, in general, continuous function with compact support or continuous function which are 0 at infinity. So this, this is usually the completion of this. So this is not complete, but this is complete. So you have to, so please do not, uh, when you look distribution theory or measure theory and so on, you know, they would, uh, pay attention if you, the symbol is zero or C. Pay attention, because one is not complete and the other is complete. This, this uh, are spaces, we will see something, I think, about these spaces, very, very common in measure theory. Continuous function with compact support in general. Okay, so uh, the reason for which this is not true, point two is not true, is that this is not a Banach space. While in the assumption here, E is Banach. Comple comple completeness is important because the proof of this theorem is based, one of the possible proof, proofs is based on bare theorem. Okay, which happens to be true in complete metric spaces. Okay. 
So please, at home, try to check these two uh, inequalities, these two assertions. Another consequence that I would like to do before proving Banach's Stenhouse is the following. Corollary. So let now Ln be a sequence of elements of this and assume, suppose that for any x. There exists the limit, and let it denote let denote this limit by L. Hmm? Then three points. Well, the first is just an immediate consequence of Ambanak. The second is, and then okay. The limit. This is also maybe a good exercise. It's it's easy. It's just a consequence of. Uh, of course, if you don't want to do it by yourself for some reason, you find this in the Brzezis book. So, check this corollary by yourself. It's very easy. The first one, well, just a con direct consequence of Ambanak. Finally, another interesting consequence of Ambanak is something which says that if you have a weakly convert in L2, but more generally, I'm saying L2 because weak convergence we have just stated only in L2, small L2, but this is true in much more generality. It concerns the fact that, in general, weakly converging sequences are bounded. Not necessarily strongly converging, but at least bounded. So we have the following corollary again. So let in the same under the same assumptions of Bambanak. Okay, the same assumptions. So corollary. So let. Uh, e be a Banach space and let B contained in E a subset with the following property for any L in a star L of B is bounded hmm? Then B itself is bounded. This is um, this, this says the following if you have a subset of your Banach space and you know what is L of B. Um, And you know that you, if you take essentially uh, the components 
of, uh, of uh, because you know, at least in L2, uh, possible linear continuous functionals in small L2 are just the projections on the given coordinate that gives you uh, that, that projection. So, so this says that all projections in particular, not only in projections, but in particular, all projections are bounded. So if you know that your set is such that all of its projections is bounded, then the set itself is bounded, more or less. If you think about small L2. OK. Uh, the proof of the corollary is not an exercise. Uh, it's an application of um, uh, banach stenhouse with, with the following position. We apply banach stenhouse with, with the following choice. Uh, uh, maybe uh, there is a conflict of notation. May I change notation here? Sorry. <laughs> there is a small conflict of notation. Let me call this capital G, capital G, and capital G. And Banach, uh, I have already erased. OK. With So we know that if this is uh, okay, we know that this, with this choice, surely E is a Banach space. Hmm? Well, this is obvious. And uh, F was n. Thank you. N was F was n. Ah, sorry. I now understand the question. <laughs> this was n. Sorry. Uh, and this is a set of indices now. And of course, in general, it's not countable. Hmm? OK, now for any b. We can define the duality uh, between for any b. We want G, uh, e equal g star, so uh, the duality between f and b. So uh, we know that this is bounded by assumption. So define this, OK? Assumption by assumption. Uh, LB, L is bounded. LB, L is bounded. LB, the set of LB is bounded. Which says that uh, uh, the supremum over B of L, B, L. And the notation is not quite, quite uh, 
sorry, the notation is not, not so good, but anyway, sup and B, LB L is finite. Hmm? Okay. This is true for any L. Just, uh, is it clear? I mean, by assumption, this set of numbers is finite, is bounded, sorry. Therefore, the supremum of this set of numbers is finite. And this is true for any L. L is in E, which is G star. So from this point twice, um, now we have that for any L, this is bounded. This is a pointwise estimate. We can pass to the uniform estimate, OK, by Hambanak. Hmm? Supremum of LB is fine. Is fine. Uh, so may, maybe more precisely, let me write it with the constant, this supremum, because it is useful. So there exists a constant, absolute constant, independent of. So that for any B in B and for any L in E, uh, L, B, L, that then will equal then C times B times L. OK? This is exactly like to say equivalently that the supremum of OK, is this, OK? By and Banach, by Banach Stenhaus. It follows. For every L in G star, we have this. This is equal, by definition, is the duality between L and B. Huh? Okay. Want to show that B is bounded. So, well, now observe that the norm of B is what? Is the supremum by one of the Okay, it's the supremum of what LB divided by, by L. Okay, sup over L. This is one of the corollaries that we have seen last time. So this means that for any B, the norm of B is this, which is always less than or equal than C. Okay? Hence, this is exactly like to say that uh, capital B is bounded, because uh, all elements of capital B have a norm which is bounded. Okay. There is there is a dual version of this. The proof is is the same, changing the symbols. So maybe it is better that uh, that I write it to you. This, but try to prove it by yourself. So uh, let now we change the. Okay. Assume now we have uh, that. For any x and g, uh, 
the set of all Lx such that L in in B star is bounded. Okay. Then B star is bounded. Okay. Uh, try to prove by yourself this. Uh, the proof is similar to the previous one. However, you have to choose different set of indices, different uh, passing to the dual. It's not so difficult after one have seen this. Okay, so five minutes. Uh, let us try to start at least the proof of Banach-Stein House. Not much time, unfortunately. So, okay, for any N. We introduce the following set. The set of all uh, points in E such that a li of x is less than or equal than n for any i. Remember the assumption. Uh, let me write here the assumption. Sup L i x less than or equal than infinity for any x. This was the assumption. Okay. Now, um, fa easy fact. Then EN are closed uh, and also the, un the union is equal to E. Well, it is immediate by definition that you have this, con this conclusion, but it's, it's easy try to prove, uh, to prove it by yourself that this inclusion also is a direct consequence of this. Hmm? So this follows the inclusion follows from one. Therefore, we, we are writing now the, ban the complete metric space as the un countable union of closed sets. Hmm? And therefore, there is at least one <coughs> okay. So we, there, there exists at least one with non-empty interior. Okay, and this is, uh, and therefore we can pick a point x naught into uh, e. We can point, we can take a radius positive such that the ball of radius r is contained in e naught. Okay. Okay, this is a consequence of Baer theorem. And this is the fact that it is it, it is non-empty interior. Okay. 
So this is containing this. Now let what is this? Is the set of all points. For any i. Okay. Now let us write explicitly this, this inclusion. What does it mean? So it means that if I take, if I write a point of this as x naught plus r, let me denote it by z maybe where z is in the unit ball. So all points of the ball centered at x naught of radius r can be written as x naught plus rz, where z are points in the unit ball. Okay? And so we have that li of, uh, so any point here has li less than an n naught. Okay? So li x naught plus rz, in norm is less than or equal than f naught for any i. Do you agree with this? Huh? Is it OK? OK. Is this clear? Mm -hmm. huh? It is simply. I'm saying that all points here, which are written as x0 plus rz, are inside this set. This means that the norm of that point, of li of that point, is less than or equal than n0. Okay? So we have this for any i and for any z in the unit ball. We have this. So this is equal to li of x0 plus rlz. And now we split, so this is larger than or equal than uh, R Li of Z minus Li of X naught. And I hope that this will give me what I want because now uh, I have that this is less than or equal than N naught. So let me write it here. So R norm of Li of Z is less than or equal to N naught plus Li of X naught for any I in I for any Z in B1, 0. Now, passing to the supremum with respect to z here, huh? passing to the supremum with respect to z, gives us less than a naught plus Li of x zero. Okay. Huh? I, I I'm taking simply the supremum with respect to z. Therefore, huh? the supremum with respect to z less than or equal than one. So, okay. So I have this. But you see, this is finite. Huh? Because now x naught is fixed, and so fi x naught is fixed. The supremum over i of this is finite; is a number by assumption. And therefore, so so this is less than or equal than n zero plus some big number by assumption. If you look at the assumption, because x naught is fixed, now I divide by r, which is positive, and therefore I find that. Li is less than or equal than, which is independent of i. So 
taking the supremum with respect to i gives the uh, assertion. <laughs> uh, and gives the conclusion. So, sorry today I'm a little bit quick because we are somehow, there are several things to do yet and <laughs> I'm still at the beginning of actual analysis.